we have often postulated as to the precise age of the great monuments of Giza, undoubtedly the most astonishing structures left by the ancient world. There are many questions which persist regarding this ancient site. Who built these extraordinary buildings? Why did they build them? And of course, when was this unimaginably enormous task undertaken? Interestingly, there exists an enigmatic statue, which it seems, although predictably little shared by academia, actually predates this astonishing time within Earth's history. Quoted as possibly one of the rarest finds of its kind, according to Dr. Clarence Epstein, Senior Director of Urban and Cultural Affairs at Concordia University, where this remarkable item is housed. Not only can no one date the object, but there also exists a language etched into its form which is yet to be deciphered. As Dr. Epstein acknowledges, no expert, among the countless he has personally consulted over the past decade, can identify the sculpture's age, artistic tradition, or indeed recognize and decipher the ancient language found etched into its base. Dr. Epstein believes the statue is of a pre-dynastic age. It was originally taken from Alexandria by the Diniacopolis family. It was then shipped with 20 crates of antiquities from Egypt and the Middle East to Canada, where it still resides. However, its whereabouts prior to the shipment are unknown. The statue is of two nude subjects standing 67 centimeters high, one male and the other presumed female. This figure is also noted as possibly holding a child. They are depicted in a sitting position, with noticeable elongated skulls. Now known as the Starving of Sakura, this due to the figure's emaciated frames, just what could this statue represent, or indeed be trying to tell us? How old could it possibly be? And most interestingly of all, what could the enigmatic writing upon its base actually mean? As more research is undertaken, it is only a matter of time before we know its true identity once and for all. Hey guys, before we discuss the most recent controversial discovery that was made in the Sariarka, a region near the city of Karaganda in Kazakhstan, I feel it is important to note that a possible cover-up has ensued surrounding the finds that have been made. A tomb has been found within what is thought to be the oldest pyramid surviving on Earth. The team of explorers who made the discovery, led by Igor Kukushkin, said that they initially believed that it was likely built for an ancient king or clan leader. However, upon realizing that a burial chamber was resting beneath this once enormous mausoleum and that it was found unopened, it has remained undisturbed for undoubtedly many millennia. Soon after the discovery, local authorities, along with rumors of the involvement of other international organizations, cordoned off the entire excavation, subsequently silencing the archaeologists for nearly a year regarding their remarkable finds, also preventing any further exploration of the ruins being reported. Just how long would it take for a once grand pyramid to virtually erode away? And what sort of things were found within this tomb that would require a year-long cover-up? Information relating to the discovery of the pyramid and the subsequent burial chamber was initially filtered to the press, yet no further information regarding this amazing excavation was made public. After over a year of silence, the team have now claimed that the chamber had somehow been robbed some years earlier conveniently leaving the oldest known pyramidal tomb on Earth empty for all the world to see. Additionally, a large debunking effort has ensued regarding the initial and largely honest conclusions made by many scholars regarding the pyramid's possible age. Many initially concluded that the pyramid actually predated its more well-known neighbors, located more than 6,000 kilometers away in Giza, by more than 1,000 years. Not too long ago when Osiris's tomb was rumored to have been discovered within Gaza, who was said to have been an alien god, a familiar sequence of events were subsequently witnessed shortly after this discovery also. Could there really be a conspiracy currently being undertaken by unknown powers to conceal the existence of ancient astronauts and possible past alien gods? With so many ancient burial chambers linked to incredibly important and lost segments of our vast ancient past, it is difficult to deny the possibility of such a conspiracy actually being played out in front of our very eyes. What do you think regarding the suppression of such finds? Are the accusations of a conspiracy sheer paranoia? 
Are these operations just protecting the discoveries from possible corruption? Or could there really be aliens buried within the tombs of pyramids that dot the earth? Or possibly even further afield? Thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. The channel's recent expose regarding the possible true age of the Great Pyramids outlaid many fragments of evidence, strongly suggesting they predate a number of past advanced lost civilizations. However, it mistakenly overlooked a possible culprit for their construction. Numerous layers of casing stones, each once an enormous undertaking, occurred at varying times within antiquity, by different civilizations which many perceive were possible conservation efforts. Due to this, and the fact that I had so far identified at least three advanced separate civilizations elsewhere, achieved through the cooperation of nearly three years' work, focused upon cataloging unexplained advanced ruins from the past, characteristics within the techniques used to construct them, toolmark signatures left upon the stones, unique identifiable architectural design, and differentiations exclusive to particular ruins, were slowly gathered and used to identify three distinct ancient civilizations with their own unique directions of development. However, I mistakenly presume that the Cyclopean civilization was placed far closer to us than the original pyramid builders. This was put forward as a personal opinion, which mystery history reluctantly has to admit that, although based on logic, has been disproven by this very same methodology. In the video, it was stated, and I quote, I have never, and now strongly feel will never, find any indicative evidence of these civilizations building the footings under any of these gigantic megaliths." End quote. I had looked for a significant time for any signature stonework, linking any of the civilizations I had identified to the placement of megalithic blocks over or around the 1,000 tons mark. If I discovered these characteristics beneath such enormous stones, I would have proven that they were indeed capable and more than likely the civilization responsible for their placement, with the most significant being the building of the pyramids. There were some issues which niggled MH regarding this postulation before the following discovery, however. Due to the lack of any footings, had to postulate the pyramid builders were a far more capable group. One such niggle were the matching scoop-like tool marks used by the Cyclopean civilization found in Bazda Cave, Turkey, officially proven to have been the quarry for Haran, a nearby settlement, which possessed their signature Cyclopean blockwork, cuboid blocks with a raised center, synonymous with many ancient builds, with the same scoop-like tool marks also present upon the excavation of the unfinished obelisk. Yet due to the absence of footings, which would have demonstrated undeniable proof that they were indeed capable of working, moving, and placing such stones, I wrongly presume that they were incapable of such tasks. However, unlike academia, regardless of disliking the realization that he was mistaken about something, the motive of the channel is honest research and logical deduction, thus admitting one's mistakes allows not only mystery history's understanding to evolve, but is the only path one can take in the pursuit of truth. The Western Wall, Wailing Wall, or Kotel as known in Islam as the Barrage Wall, is an ancient limestone wall in the old city of Jerusalem. Originally erected to its current height by Herod the Great in 19 BC, enclosing the Temple Mount in a large rectangular structure topped by a huge flat platform. The Western Wall is considered holy by both practicing Muslims and Jews. Of the four retaining walls, the western one is considered to be closest to the former temple, which makes it the most sacred site recognized by Judaism outside the former Temple Mount Esplanade. Just over half of the wall's total height, including its 17 courses located below street level, is academically claimed to date from the end of the Second Temple period and is commonly believed to have been entirely built around 19 BC by Herod the Great. However, the western stone, weighing around 600 tons and a few other enormous stones, all located below ground level within the base, 
not only possesses compelling evidence of incredible antiquity, but beneath this enormous stone are the signature blocks of the civilization I named the Cyclopeans. This is evidence I wrongly presumed I would never find, demonstrating that the civilization I call the Cyclopeans were indeed capable of moving such gigantic stones. What's more, they were also capable of moving the pyramid stones, and indeed those of Baalbek, yet to be a viable suspect, due to the immense age of the pyramids, evidence would need to be found to support this, and amazingly, these foundation stones do indeed contain just that. Still embedded within holes, presumably cut for the placement of the blocks, timber chocks can be found in these foundation stones, wooden planks which have over an unimaginable amount of time petrified into coal, stone, and flint-like materials, indicating a minimum age of at least 100,000 years, as such decay and petrification would not have been able to occur in the currently attested timeline. Could these stones date from the original construction of Giza's Great Pyramids? It is undoubtedly a wall many followers of certain Abrahamic monotheistic faiths hold in high regard, and one of incredible importance to them. Amazingly, however, due to these amazing features, it is also of high significance in regards to unraveling the secrets of history. It is, undoubtedly, highly compelling. Arce, the American Research Center in Egypt. Arce's website states as follows. Among Arce's many great achievements is our relationship with the Supreme Council of Antiquities, the SCA, within the Egyptian Ministry of Culture, without whom our work would not be possible. Arce is viewed as making important contributions that serve to help Egypt directly in its pursuit of cultural heritage preservation. What this statement confesses to is the implication and more than likely collaboration with Egyptian authorities to cover up the real truth about ancient Egypt. In 1992, German robotics engineer Rudolf Gantenbrick was exploring shafts within the Queen's Chamber at the Great Pyramid, using a crawler robot he had designed himself. His intentions were to install an air conditioning system within the pyramid's existing design. While exploring these ancient tunnels, he discovered one of the shafts was blocked by a tiny limestone blocking door, a secret doorway only accessible with the use of robotic technology. Rudolf Gantenbrick, who was able to map, explore, and analyze the shafts for many years, believed a second door would have suggested the possibility that there would be yet another 40 centimeters further away. His hypothesis, based on the knowledge that many ancient Egyptian funerary monuments were equipped with a series of three blocking doors placed close to each other in succession before the entrance to a sacred tomb. In 2002, the National Geographic Society discovered this second door. Using their own robot known as Pyramid Rover, this event, closely supervised by Arce, who subsequently pulled the plug on the whole operation regarding the shafts. The team had a simple solution to Gantenbrick's problem. They sent the robot along the shaft, gripping the walls instead of the ceiling and floor. In this manner, it was somehow able to ride over the top of the obstacles. The rover's journey along the northern shaft revealed yet another door, just as Gantenbrick's claimed. Mysterious hieroglyphs, written on the floor of the hidden tunnels within Egypt's Great Pyramid, were shown to the world in an initial report on the robot's discoveries published within the Du Service des Antiquities. The images revealed features that had not been seen by human eyes since the construction of the monument. Researchers from around the world were particularly intrigued by three red ochre figures painted upon the tunnel's end deep inside the pyramid. Books such as Giza the Truth by Chris Harold and Ian Lawton, The Stargate Conspiracy by Lynn Picknett and Clive Prince, and Secret Chamber by Robert Balvel have all, thanks to the tremendous and diligent research accomplished within, shed light upon the controversy surrounding the Giza Plateau and the secret chamber's existence. The key question, the theme witnessed throughout these studies, was whether information has been withheld, discoveries undisclosed, and an understanding of the pyramids and sphinx existence purposefully kept hidden from the world. On the 22nd of March, 1993, 
Dr. Zawi Hawass was suspended from his position as chief inspector of the Giza Pyramid Plateau. It seems Gantenbrick took an opportunity, while the powers that be were distracted, to announce his findings to the world press in early April. It would appear, after substantial digging, that the string pullers within Egypt originate out of America and are stationed within Egypt in the form of Arsi. The truth regarding what is buried beneath these ancient structures may still remain a mystery, but realizing the obstacles obstructing an understanding of this truth is half the battle won. The Queen's Chamber, which lays within the Great Pyramid of Khufu, more commonly known as Cheops, has astonished, shocked, and mystified Egyptologists since its mysterious existence was discovered. The intrigue into this elusive chamber, along with its mysterious adjacent shafts, comes as no surprise once one understands the anomalous characteristics of their construction. As we have already covered before, massive cover-ups have been suspected as taking place surrounding this mysterious chamber since its discovery. Strange shaft tunnels, set at a 45-degree incline, no larger than 20 centimeters in diameter, run away from this room, and no one seems to know why. Not only would these ancient shafts require being hermetically sealed during the pyramid's construction to stop them from becoming blocked, but the excruciating effort that would have gone into making them becomes all the more of a confusing undertaking once you realize they were not even connected to the chamber, but hidden 40 centimeters away from entering the tomb within the walls, completely invisible from the inside of the burial room located deep within the structure. Cheops, noticeably being the only pyramid to have ever been constructed with such shafts, making their addition a popular mystery within Egyptian history. One leads out from the subterranean chamber, two lead out from a termination point some 40 centimeters from the wall of the so-called Queen's Chamber, or now popularly suspected to be that of an alien tomb among ancient alien specialists, and two from the King's Chamber above. Here is where our story becomes interesting. Rudolf Gantenbrick, famous for actually discovering the blocking door within one of the queen's chamber shafts, which could lead to an as yet undisclosed tomb, has also made other curious discoveries within the Great Pyramid. Discoveries which could only be explained by modern covert explorations of tunnels that were supposedly to that point unexplored. Gantenbrick's cache being but one example of these mysterious finds, deep within the tunnel systems in the royal chamber, at a 90-degree turn going vertically upwards, a pile of papers, possibly wrapped artifacts, weighed down with a small piece of timber or stone, possibly another artifact, was discovered by Gantenbrick's robot. Also, during initial location attempts to find access tunnels leading to the Queen's Chamber, several blocking stones required removal. After the removal of the seventh block, a modern-era hexagonal steel rods were discovered discarded upon the tunnel's floor. Each section of the hexagonal steel rods measures 2.7 meters in length and was fitted with a round socket which allowed them to be joined to the next section. In one of the lower shafts in 1872, Wayneman Dixon found three more objects which could be considered proof of prior covert exploration of the mysterious northern shafts. A copper grappling hook about 5 centimeters in length, accompanied by a small, gray-green stone ball and a broken-off piece of a square wooden slat or rod about 13 centimeters long, the wood would today be the most intriguing of his finds. These artifacts suspected to be remnants of the grave robber's tools could have been carbon dated, yet this fragment is the only one of the three to now be missing out of the London Museum's collection. Unfortunately, in his writings, Dixon doesn't say in which of the two lower shafts he actually found the objects, but he mentions them in connection with a northern one. Not only did these obviously highly intelligent people leave evidence of how they must have gotten in, but also traces upon the previous untouched ancient walls of the shafts within Cheops, clearly left by their previous robotic technologies. Other square metal rods have been recovered along with other artifacts discarded within some tunnel systems deep within the ancient structures. 
meaning these guys got to the treasures way before we did. Interestingly, reported evidence of covert excavations continues to this day, heavy-duty electrical supplies discreetly running into and trailing deep into the pyramids have been noticed and photographed by some of the more astute tourists. Witnesses to the sounds of heavy machinery being used beneath the site is also frequently reported, yet rarely followed up. It seems it's not a question of whether brilliant minds have achieved the seemingly impossible in penetrating these secret layers, but more a question of how and what astonishing finds have possibly been kept concealed. During a previous video titled Secret Missions into the Great Pyramid, in which we covered the most bizarre of artifacts once found in a seemingly inaccessible shaft, eventually discovered to be an entry shaft into the now-named Queen's Chamber. Just how this bronze ball, hook, and several bizarre fragments of wood found their way into the pyramids is unknown. We shared the fact that the wood had become conveniently lost thus preventing any future dating of the artifacts or indeed this possible attempt to have once penetrated the pyramid far before the Spanish invasion of Egypt, their modern rediscovery, or indeed before the entrance to the pyramid was located. However, in a rather strange yet fortunate twist of fate, sitting within a collection of ancient Asian relics within Scotland, an Egyptian archaeologist was shocked to rediscover these cedar fragments once mislabeled and thus never classified, lost for almost 70 years, yet refound within an old cigar box. One has to wonder, with our prior hypothesis, and indeed the convenience of the wood somehow becoming lost, was this a deliberate act by someone? Possibly someone who realized the controversy attached to this artifact. What we find most compelling, however, and a possible motive to hide such an artifact are the now-realized result of modern carbon dating, showing that the wood dates to somewhere between 3341 and 3094 BC, long before the claimed construction of the pyramid. Furthermore, although many have claimed that counterweights and timber structures were utilized in the construction of the pyramids, this wood not only predates the claimed date of their creation, but does so by some 1 to 2,000 years. So any mainstream explanation for this dating anomaly is severely lacking. However, it fits perfectly with our original hypothesis and is indicative not only of a far earlier date of construction, but could indeed have been a possible successful attempt at penetrating the pyramid's deepest inner chambers, simply due to the mysterious yet impressive location in which these enigmatic artifacts were found and subsequently retrieved from. Curatorial assistant Abir Aladani found the fragments of wood as she perused the Asia section of the archives of the University of Aberdeen. Quote, Once I looked into the numbers of our Egypt records, I instantly knew what it was and that it had effectively been hidden in plain sight in the wrong collection. I'm an archaeologist and have worked on digs in Egypt, but I never imagined it would be here in northeast Scotland that I'd find something so important to the heritage of my own country." End quote. As you can imagine, we find the wooden artifacts highly compelling. <laughs>